Whenever I heard that I mean, no. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. There's another fly here. I swear if that fly comes back, I'm gonna get him. Okay, well, I guess I should introduce myself now. So my name is Marissa and I have been a minimalist for five years now, over five years now, and I've been living frugally for much longer than that. Before we get started with this list of 50 things that I no longer buy since becoming a minimalist, I just wanted to make something clear. I am not a minimalist because I don't like stuff. In fact, I used to be a sentimental hoarder. Minimalism is something that has helped me heal after decades of grief. It's made me a better mother and a better wife. It's helped us live together happier as a family and have more time to do the things that we actually enjoy doing. That's why my passion now is helping others reclaim some of their happiness through a minimalist lifestyle. So if any of those things that I mentioned sound good to you, what I want you to do is go down and hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and join our family. I would love to see you around more. Minimalism is deeply personal. I just want you to keep that in mind that there is no perfect minimalism. What works for me might not work for you. This list is not meant to offend anyone in any way or to shame you for owning these things, but rather perhaps to think a little bit more about the things that we own if they're owning you and do you actually need them? All right, so one of the first things that I stopped buying, I would say not only part of my minimalist lifestyle, but also my frugal lifestyle is anything that I can get for free. You would not believe the furniture that rich people throw out throw out like trash. So we used to go play in some parks close to very wealthy areas when we lived in New Jersey and I once found this gorgeous teak solid wood dresser that was in the trash. I literally stomped on the brakes and then pulled over to the side really quick and I could see the trash men were coming. I looked at this thing and it was so beautiful and I knew there was no way I could get it into my trunk. So then I just had to drive away sadly. Anyway, my point is people throw away perfectly good stuff all the time. So not only can you go cruising the streets for free furniture, I've also found things like a sign that I turned into a necklace hanger in our recycling center, free boxes when I was selling on eBay and making $1,000 a month, I got all of my shipping stuff totally free. You can also join swapping groups on places like Facebook Marketplace or there's even a website called Free Cycle where people exchange things that they don't want anymore for other things and that keeps them out of the trash and helps with a more sustainable lifestyle. Another thing that I don't buy anymore is anything that's full price. So once I find something that I like, Usually I can wait until it goes on sale. If I find something I like, I'm okay shopping around for something similar or waiting until it goes on sale. And you can set up price alerts at a website called Camel 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 and you can get notified when something reduces in price. Even on Amazon, prices fluctuate up and down a lot and I like to look for the best price possible. Something else that I don't purchase anymore is hair products. I do not buy curling irons, I don't use a hair dryer. I don't use hairsprays. These curls were created using a heatless overnight method and they are the best curls I have ever had. Take it from someone who has impossibly genetically stick straight hair that cannot even hold a perm. This works. If you want to know how to do it, let me know in the comment section below and I can share that video. How's that? Good? I also don't really pay for frequent haircuts and I never pay for dye jobs. I only go once a year at the most. That's just something that I, with my naturally very fine stick straight hair, am able to do. Keeping up with this list of items within the beauty categories, I don't buy special lotions or body sprays. I prefer natural scents and the only lotion that I use is Cetaphil, which is like the cheapest of the cheap drugstore moisturizer. Nail care. I don't spend money on nail care at all. I've never really cared about doing my nails. I think you can probably tell because 
they look like this. I don't buy nail polish, therefore I don't have to buy a nail polish remover. All I do is trim my nails every once in a while. Makeup, I don't go out and splurge on makeups. In fact, my makeup routine is very, very simple. Makeup is not something that I care about a lot and therefore I don't spend money on it. I also don't buy perfumes. I prefer a natural scent and my husband also doesn't like to smell strong smells, so I do not wear perfume. I also don't buy expensive skincare products. Like I mentioned earlier, I just use the Cetaphil as the lotion instead. With my skin, unfortunately, everything is the same. No matter what, I have blackheads and I'm oily and I'm getting wrinkles, which is great. Another thing that I don't buy anymore is disposable razors. I actually have a man's razor, I think gender, Divisions for razors are so dumb. Why do we have to have girl razors and boy razors? I bought a high quality man's razor with an interchangeable head and change it out every once in a while. I tried an epilator. Oh my gosh. Have you ever tried using an epilator? I would just start breaking out in a sweat whenever I heard that turn on because I knew the pain was coming. That thing is literally a torture device. I, I can't, I can't do it. I mean, no. Another item that I no longer buy is lip balm. So like those cute chapsticks or flavored chapsticks, I don't buy those anymore. I buy a huge container of Aquaphor. That has literally changed my life because after I was pregnant, something about my hormones had just changed and I was just getting cold sores every single month. I had Aquaphor because my son had food allergies and he had a lot of eczema. One day I started putting it on my lips and then months later I realized, oh my gosh, I don't get cold sores anymore. That was seven years ago and since then I haven't had a single cold sore, all due to the Aquaphor. I went from monthly cold sores to no cold sores. Insane. Big fan of Aquaphor. Oh, this next one is a pet peeve of mine. Novelty or gag gifts. You know, like those gifts that you get for people when you're trying to be funny and it's like, oh ha ha, that's so funny. I would never buy something just to give someone a quick laugh so they can throw it away, I would try to get a thoughtful present that would actually be useful. Along the same lines, my husband and I also don't buy anniversary, birthday, or Christmas gifts for each other anymore. If we see something that we like for one another, then we'll go ahead and get it. He bought me a water bottle the other day that I actually broke, so I need a new water bottle. No more glass water bottles for me. Fumble fingers. My kids get one Christmas present each, so all year we talk about what do you want for Christmas. They both have in mind what they want for Christmas. We'll see if it's still that or if they change before we get there, but they each only get one present for birthdays and for Christmas. And speaking of birthdays, we also don't buy birthday cards anymore. I just find myself always feeling like it's such a waste to give someone a birthday card that's only going to be thrown away. At best, it's going to get recycled. At worst, it's gonna end up in the garbage dump. I make it a policy that I don't give birthday cards anymore, just birthday presents. Something else that I don't buy anymore is plastic containers for things. I'm trying to move away from plastic and towards glass. Obviously, that's not gonna work for my water bottle. Clearly, I can't be trusted with glass water bottles, but as for our containers, I'm trying to use glass meal prep containers. I do not go out and buy pots and pans anymore. Anymore. I've had the same giant steel wok for 10 years now since my wedding. I went and bought another all clad pan because I love that one so much and I have one non-stick frying pan and that's it. I also have one of my mom's pans that has lasted now 40 years. Obviously, I like things that can last a long time. I'm gonna keep using that indefinitely. We also don't have expensive china sets or plates or dishes for special occasions. The things that we have, we use on a regular basis. Dryer sheets, we live in a 100 year old home in Germany and because our home is old, it doesn't have the proper configuration or hookups for a well working dryer. I I don't have to buy dryer sheets anymore. Instead, I hang the clothes up to dry. That works just fine for us. Before I became a minimalist, I actually liked doing crafts and DIYs a lot, and I still like doing them, but I don't just buy craft supplies to have craft supplies. If I have something specific that I want to do, I go out and I buy things for that particular product. I had a lot of craft supplies sitting around taking up space, and I never did those crafts, and I ended up getting rid of them. paid games or apps. I do not pay for any apps or games on my phone. I paid for a learning app once, I believe 
leave and that was enough for me. There's usually free alternatives. I like apps that make me money, like the eBay app is something you will find on my phone. Also selling things on Facebook Marketplace. Let me see what else I have. Oh, one app that I absolutely love is the Google Keep app because that app lets me keep to-do lists and checklists so that I no longer have to have physical planners. That's another thing that I don't get anymore is I don't like to have physical planners anymore. I do all of my planning digitally. I instead keep a Google Calendar and then I also have the Google Keep app. I like that I have moved all digital now. It's made me much happier. Bottled water, now this is one of those things where it's like sometimes there's exceptions. When we were moving into our new home, we didn't have a kitchen, we didn't have running water, and we didn't have anything to drink here when we were working hours and hours at a time to get our house ready to move in. So at that time, we had to buy bottled water. But you know, sometimes in life, you have to make exceptions. So again, these things are not strict rules. They're just guidelines that we generally try to live our life, but I'm not kicking myself in the butt because we had to get bottled water one time. And I made sure to recycle those bottled waters when I went to the grocery store here in Germany. They have a wonderful recycling program that allows you to get money back even right there at the store when you go and recycle your bottles. So. Hey, what's up? Come with me a second. You and I need to talk. So here's the deal. At this point, I have been working on shooting and editing that video for like 20 hours now. I know it probably doesn't seem like it. It's already noon on Wednesday and I'm supposed to upload this at two o'clock. So we're really gonna speed things up here. I'm absolutely sick and tired of looking at my own face and listening to myself talk. So if I feel like that, I'm gonna assume that other people probably feel like that too. So if you appreciate the real raw honesty here, please give this video a like. Let's get through the rest of these 50 items, okay? Let's do this. Cable TVs, movie tickets, books, magazines, souvenirs, jewelry, fast fashion, special occasion clothing, purses and shoes, cheap plastic hangers, takeaway coffee, name brand foods, fast food, frozen dinners. We save a ton of money. Pre-sliced apples or sliced and peeled butternut squash, soda, that is a whole lot of sugar that my kids do not need. A car. We have one car and I do not want a car for myself. If it was up to me, we would be a car-free family. Candles or air fresheners, knickknacks or collectibles. Candy, toys. We only buy one toy for Christmas, one toy for birthdays, bulk food items, late fees on bills, expensive phone plans. The last thing that I stop buying as a minimalist is lottery tickets. And that concludes my list of 50 things that I stopped buying as a minimalist. As a minimalist over the past five years, as well as a frugal person over the past decade. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and don't forget to go down below and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I would love to have you join our family and see you around more. Take care, bye-bye.